Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. It's been a little time since we dipped our toes back into this world, so let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chain, you are up, and let's go. Okay. It dictates our calendars and helps us navigate. Astronomy. I correct him teasingly, causing the gray male to blink. What? Astrology is more like uh, fortune telling and stuff. I know what astrology is. And it still deals with the knowledge of stars. You do realize it's pretty much most of Varissa's job, right? He teases right back and forces me to chuckle. There you go. That's better. Turn that frown upside down. My smile widens as the wolf rubs my cheek with his furry paw. Banishing the frown that adorned my face just a moment ago. So, what about the sky upsets you so? I don't recognize any of it. I shrug in defeat, looking up towards a sparkling firmament. You say it's early in spring. If I were truly home worldwide, not just the place I was born in, Orion would have would have been clearly visible in the sky no matter my location. Orion? It's the name of a constellation, a group of stars that... I know what a constellation is. He growls playfully, rolling his eyes and returning to his meal. S sorry. Uh, the most recognizable part of Orion is his belt. Uh, three bright stars in a line, with the last with the last one slightly off axis. It's not there. In fact, I can't even see the dippers. I assume those are more those are most familiar stars to you. The wolf mumbles between each remaining spoonful. I was never any good with stars, but most kids were taught how to recognize the dippers, mainly because at the end of the little one you had the northern star. The northern star? It's right there. He points vaguely into a spot high above us, finally cleaning his bowl with long laps of his tongue. I allow him to finish, as he seems to be quite hungry, and it was a long day of exhausting of exhausting trek after all. But once he's done, I look to him expectantly as he takes a thirsty gulp from the wineskin. That's not the Northern Star, at least not the one I know. Of course it is. What else would it be? It's one of the brightest stars, and the entire celestial sphere revolves around it. That's why it's so invaluable for finding your way. Yeah, I get that. That's how it works for my Northern Star as well, but... Those two are not the same. Well, maybe the constellations are different because you're on the other side of the globe. This catches me by surprise, and I look at him wide-eyed. Wait, you know you know that the world is round? Okay, now you're actively trying to be insulting. He scoffs teasingly, taking another long swig of his drink to wash down his finished meal, and I shake my hands in protest. No, no, sorry if that's how it comes across. I'm just uh, surprised. I know, a knowledgeable savage. The wolf sneers again, and I hang my head in resignation. Anyway, if you're suggesting I'm from the south, you're mistaken. How do you know? One, I vividly remember being from the Northern Hemisphere. Your memory is a jumbled mess. I wouldn't trust it that much if I were you. He interrupts, and although he's doing it more in the form of another jab, I can't help but concede some merit to his way of thinking. Okay, then. Two, my complexion is way off for the southern part of your world. What do you mean by that? Well, I kind of skimmed your books, but I understood that most of the lands down south are scorching hot deserts and rocky wastelands, uh, savannas and jungles. Fair-skinned humans don't fare well in those areas, I state plainly. Sure, perhaps in my modern, globalized world that's not exactly the case, but I doubt mass migration occurs here in their long, long, far-away times. And people of my skin tone tend to stick to colder climates, temperate at most. Anything warmer than that, the skin becomes tanned. Hmm. His puzzled expression makes it clear he doesn't understand what I'm saying. At the same time, I doubt he knows much about skin tones anyways. They're covered with fur head to toe. They're shielded from the sun. We... We, on the other hand, only have melanin. I'm definitely from the north, and this is definitely not my sky, I conclude, throwing my hands upwards in resignation. It's not just constellations, though. Some of the stuff up there is completely mental. I mean, I've never seen a red star in my life. For no known reason, the wolf visibly shudders at the mention of this oddity. His ears fall flat, and he diverts his gaze away from where I was pointing. That's the ruby eye, and it's better not to pay attention to it. Why? I scoff in amusement at his deflated posture. It's an eye that never blinks, and according to legends, it belonged to the Lord of Nightmares. If you gaze at it for too long, you give him a chance to peer into your soul and find your darkest fears. That's an odd woven legend. It isn't woven. He shakes his head, looking at me with a rather serious expression. Every creature in Avalon knows to avoid that star. If it's the first thing you see at night, it's a really bad omen. Well then, good thing it wasn't the first thing I saw. From now on, let's pretend it doesn't exist. 
I smiled gently, patting his paw in agreement. I'm not about to mock his beliefs and customs again. That's pretty much what everyone does. Rennick nearly empties the wineskin, leaving perhaps a small gulp at the bottom of it. He passes it to me as he rubs his muzzle clean, and I decide to humor him. I chug the remaining contents, and once I'm done, I instill my lips from the bag with a satisfied gasp. I know it sounds weird, but you talking about the stars kind of soothes my nerves. I wouldn't mind if you gave me a crash course. A what now? Another of my word choices catches him off guard, and I chuckle. A rundown. A lesson of sorts. Of course. I'd love to. His attitude quickly changes from surprise to that of excitement. The sound of his tail taps bring me a, brings a smile to my face, and I look up as the wolf, as the wolf arches up backwards to look toward the sky. Stargazing is one of my favorite pastimes. He croons, lowering himself down onto the ground and patting the spot beside him. Come, lay down next to me. It doesn't take much time for me to accept the invitation, and I crawl there, gently scooching myself into his torso. Comfortable? The wolf asks as I rest my head against his biceps and nod. Very well, then. As I said, that's the Northern Star. He points again, but this time I pay careful attention without questioning any of this. It's actually the beginning of the nor of the northern. It's actually the beginning of the Northern Fork. Northern Fork. It goes down here and splits into two. I'm sure there's some legend attached to it, but I never paid much attention when the old shaman was teaching his user teaching us this stuff. He smug snuggle into his muscle as he laughs awkwardly, keeping an eye on his clawed finger, still tracing the skies above. On the right side, you have the Northern Crown. This one I know a little better. It is said that it was once a real crown made of silver leaves and diamonds, created by a powerful god as a gift to a beautiful mortal. He hoped to seduce her, but she refused his advances. She chose her own kind, and in effect, death, over deity and immortality. Insulted, the god broke the crown apart, and in a fit of rage he scattered it over the sky, so that she and her descendants forever would know what they spurned. Huh. I like that. It's poetic and dramatic. I muttered in amusement, drawing, a, drawing his momentary attention. The human myths are also like that. I'm not sure if this one's a woven myth, but it's something we tell the pups. Why? Aren't woven myths this melodramatic? Rennick chuckles at my little tease and flexes his muscles slightly. Are you kidding? You should see a woven courtship. Sparks never fail to fly. That I can believe. I let out a subtle laugh and he smiles back at me. There's undeniable sexual tension in this small exchange, and we both get slightly flushed, so we turn our gazes back to the sky. Here on the left, you have the archer. He was set there to protect the crown so that no mortal could ever claim it. See? His bow is even drawn. Huh. He trails his finger to the opposite side of the sparkling dome. That clump of stars over there is called the spider web. I'm not really aware of any myth relating to it, but I'm sure there are a few. And what about this one over here? I point to a glimmering collection of stars that seemed almost to tease me with their beauty. Ha! Huh. What? I ask, confused by his sudden laugh, and now quite and now quite a telling smirk. That's the great wolf. Get out! No, really. Curious, he drew your attention. His continuous smirk intensifies, and I blush slightly. Oh no, two of us can play this game. I lean in closer, pressing my body slightly harder against his form, and muster the most seductive whisper I possibly can. It seems I have an affinity for great wolves. I swear I felt a shudder shoot through his body, and at the corner of the eye, I could see his bulge push against the stitching of his pants. <laughs> Damn, he's cute when he's flustered, but I decided not to push it. Instead, I returned to my neutral position, looking up into the blue expanse as the wolf clears his throat. <clears throat> anyway, it's a celestial form of the Great Spirit. Whenever he's not roaming the world, he looks upon it from up there and guards the heavens. Huh, and what about that bright smudge traversing the sky? I asked regarding what I assumed to be their galaxy. It looks so much like the Milky Way, it almost makes me believe this might be home after all. We call it the White River, and there at its center is the House of Dawn. He points to a radiant collection of stars. It's supposed to be a celestial court made of light where some believe that does a where some believe the deserving dead go. Some, but not wolves, right? No. We firmly believe in the final darkness. But I understand why some can follow the faith of the light, believing that some part of them returns to the House of Dawn. It must be comforting. Sure is. I mutter, not really certain where I stand on religion right now. And again, everything does point for me to be somehow reincarnated. Sometimes I even doubt my own conviction, especially when seeing the Evans the Evans the Evans Star and Morning Star beginning their journeys from there. Evan Star? There are two stars, brighter than any others appearing in the sky. They seem to venture to and from the House of Dawn. I'm not sure if it's the same star or really, just showing a different time. But it is there. 
Is it out tonight? Look around, trying to find it, but come up empty-handed. No, it doesn't always appear. The Evan Star shows up in the evening and the Morning Star at dawn. They also don't move like the rest. Instead of slowly rotating on the sky, they seem to be passing by. It might be a planet, then. A what now? This confusion is so sudden and so surprising that I choke on a chuckle. You know, a planet, like this one. What do you mean? What's a planet? You know, you know that the world is round, but you don't have the concept of a planet? My voice might be more taunting than I intend, but I'm still completely thrown off by his remark. Thankfully, the wolf doesn't take it too seriously and dons an equally mocking tone. I'm sorry, my lord, that I wasn't educated at the Tiggery Academy. I only learned what's useful for my backward, savage survival. Oh, knock it off! I elbow him slightly and proceed to answer his question more thoughtfully. A planet is a, a world, just like this one. Well, maybe not like this one, exactly. And most of them are barren and devoid of life. Empty worlds floating in space. Mm -hmm. He sounds unconvinced. Looking up in silence until his curiosity gets the better of him. But why would it glow? It reflects the light of the sun, just like the moon does. If you'd like this world from if you'd like if you'd look at this world from out there, it would also shine. But instead of white, it would look like a blue marble. You can almost picture him following this up with how you how you would know. How do you know? But instead the wolf falls silent. We both gaze at the emptiness above us for a while. I think that he is looking at the night sky with a different perspective now, and soon my suspicion is confirmed. Hmm. So you say there are other worlds out there? Yep, thousands of them within the visible sky, and millions further beyond. That's some insane stuff. His voice is filled with awe. His gaze doesn't break from the glittering stars above. He doesn't seem to be questioning anything I tell him. It feels good to be trusted like this. Yeah. I muse through a smile and snuggle deeper into his muscle, only to hear him snort. Not as insane as you claiming to be from out there. You'd be surprised at the level of insane I'm willing to entertain here. My chuckle joins his merriment, and he murmurs at me teasingly. Okay, surprise me. At first, I'm not sure how I would even start to explain my predicament, but I quickly realize that his affinity for, astro for astronomy might be the best gateway for us reaching an understanding. The world I come from is part of a set. Mm-hmm. He croons seductively, but I simply continue. And nine planets, in fact. Or eight, and a planetoid if you're one of those annoying know-it-alls. The wolf raises his brow higher and higher with each passing word. And eventually, it leaves no doubt he's struggling to keep a straight muzzle. Okay, I can see your expression, and I really need you to know that I am not making this up. There are nine planets in the solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. To my own surprise, naming them fills me with sudden joy and hope. Almost as if saying that aloud reaffirmed my belief in what's real. It's not insane. I remember this. Apart from Earth, none of those planets can sustain life. The closest planetary system to the solar one is Alpha Centauri. And as far as we know, there are no life-sustaining planets there either. This is where my mood plummets, the dreadful realization. This means that wherever we are, it's far beyond the world I know. Ah, he said it! Far beyond the world! <laughs> At first, we stay silent, both gazing at the endless possibilities of different worlds suspended above in the sea of darkness. The longer the silence lasts, the more unsettled I become. I look to the wolf who doesn't break his sight from the stars, and, I, and eventually I rub his chest fluff to solicit a reaction. Rannick. You're saying what exactly? That you're from beyond the stars? It's clear he's unable, he's unable to comprehend this, and now that he vocalizes his confusion, I feel even more lost as what I'm trying to communicate here. It all sounds bloody mad. That's why I struggle to talk to you about this. I don't know what I'm saying. Our joint awkwardness lingers, but only for a short while. The wolf finally adjusts his position so that his torso is more lean towards me, so that he can embrace me gently. I'm not saying I don't believe you, although I have to suspend my disbelief quite a lot here. He mutters uneasily. There are humans on Avalon. You know that, right? You must be just confused. Maybe you studied myths and legends, and after whatever happened to you, they got jumbled up with your memories. It's clear he's weighing his words carefully to not offend me, and I feel bad for putting him in such an awkward situation. If I were in his shoes, I'd feel exactly the same. Wouldn't that make more sense than you being from, what, out there? The thing is, I don't even know if it's out there. I shrug equally uncomfortably. A big-ass red star would have been quite a memorable part of my nightly stargazing sessions. The fact that there are humans here makes it even more confusing. And don't blame me for struggling to understand what I'm saying. Even I can't wrap my head around this. I can't begin to imagine your torment. He brushes my cheek with his paw in a comforting manner. It's been driving me insane those last few days, but I don't know who to talk to without coming across as deranged. You're the only one I can trust. Thank you, and I will try my best to prove worthy of it, but... 
He pauses, looking back towards the sky. I'm glad you didn't speak to anyone else about this. Well, I was considering talking to Verissa. By Aluna, I'm glad you didn't. Anyone but her. What? Why? She's a dear friend, but she's also a shaman. Renick states heavily. The tribe's safety will always take precedence. If you tell her any of this, she might have gotten spooked. She would have gotten spooked. And dug up some obscure scrolls or an absurd legend that would paint you as something bad or foreboding. I'd rather have her stay focused on the task of protecting you without dividing her loyalties. Seems a little bit underhanded. I don't conceal how uncomfortable it makes me to hide stuff like this from her. It is, and I won't lie about that, but she only protected your life so far because she believes you're innocent and helpless. What you told me not only sounds mad, but incredibly dangerous. How so? It's a level of arcane knowledge that approaches a magister level. Everyone is already convinced you're a, you're a Tiggery noble. Thanks to you, I interrupt grumpily, but he ignores it. If they suspect you have anything to do with their magis class, that you studied the hidden arts, it would mean a death sentence for you. So far, I'm facing a death sentence for merely existing, so this isn't exactly news at this point. I'm being serious. Why? Were the other warnings just for laughs? I jest, but his stern look quickly drives my levity away, and I just shrug in defeat. I'm no mage. I don't even ha I don't have any magical powers. Not all mages wield raw magic. Many only possess many only possess ancient knowledge. But both are equally as dangerous. The wolf groans, closing his eyes. No mage can enter Tyrion without a royal warrant and without clearly declaring himself as such. If you'd be accused if you'd be accused of being one, it would mean espionage and potentially cause of cause a major diplomatic scandal. Surely this could be easily verifiable. Just asking for my credentials would be enough. He gives a rather condescending look, and I raise my hands. What? You honestly can't be this naive. Tigeron would deny you being a mage whether you were, or you were one or not. Who in the right mind would admit to a captured spy? Damn. He's right. The world are ages apart. One thing never changes. States never admit to any wrongdoing. But with that, another thought enters my mind. One I was trying to suppress for quite a while, but it was always there. I finally decide to voice it. Do you think I am one? What? He blurts out in panic. No, I didn't mean it like that. I know, but it made me wonder. Do you think I could be one? What are you saying? Finally, the wolf pulls away from me, slightly startled, and we both sit up, looking at each other intently. Can you just answer the question? I plead, and he finally concedes with a silent nod. No, I, didn't I don't think you are. I think you're just really confused. Believe me, I have trouble understanding any of this myself. The beast folk, the, the woven language part. I can't even wrap my head around magic being real, but... All right, guys and girls, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.